Thanks, Juliet. And more on our top story of the day, the GOP presidential rivals facing off on national security issues, foreign policy, and last night's Republican debate, attacking the president's policies and each other. But who are the winners, who are the losers, and who was the, uh, the overachiever? Our political panel is here to weigh in. we got Katie Pavlich here. She's editor for townhall.com. Tara Dodell is here. She's back, political strategist and former aide to New Jersey Governor Jim McGreevy and syndicated columnist, uh, Micah Halpern is here. Welcome to all of you. You picked out three moments, one, one each, so let's get to it. Katie, with you. Who it stood out for you? What do you want to share with us? I thought that Mitt Romney's comment about Obamacare costing a trillion dollars and these automatic cuts going to, to, vet, to, to defense costing a trillion dollars was an interesting political point that I'd like to take a look at. All right, let's go. Let's listen. What they're doing is cutting a trillion dollars out of the defense budget. They're cutting a trillion dollars out of the defense budget, which just happens to equal the trillion dollars they're putting into Obamacare. And that, those, that's the ramifications of right. not having anything emerge in the super committee. Right, and it's hard for people to take Mitt Romney seriously when he talks about Obamacare because of his Romney, Romney care history. However, when you look at the political point on this, he hit Obama on foreign policy on this issue. And he's, he's saying Obama's putting socialized medicine over the national defense. And the difference is socialized medicine isn't in the Constitution, providing for the common defense is. Right. Uh, uh, Tara, you and I agree on this. You think the moment was Newt Gingrich talking about immigration. I was shocked by it. I was shocked by it as well. I have to say, though, Newt Gingrich is, I have to give it to him, he's a very smart man, and he handled it very well. But the problem is, yet again, he's going to, it's going to come back to bite him for things he said in the past, and the other candidates are going to harp on it. Most already have. Uh, his record and what's already on the record. Let's listen to Newt last night. I don't see how the, par the party that says it's the party of the family is going to adopt an immigration policy which destroys families that have been here a quarter century. And I'm prepared to take the heat for saying, let's be humane in enforcing the law without giving them citizenship. John McCain said something similar to that, and it destroyed him for a while, had him buried in Iowa, correct? Yes, yes. And, that, and I think and Michelle Bachman has already gone on the attack for, uh, on Newt Gingrich for that statement last night. Right, and comments. so was Mitt Romney. Uh, uh, Mika, uh, Micah, let's talk about uh, what you think. You're going to go back to Ron Paul and the Patriot Act. Yeah, I think the excitement of the debate has very little to do with who wins and who loses. It's rather entertainment and education. And Ron Paul is there to educate America. And the Patriot Act is one of those elements where you see the difference between his libertarian views and Republican views. And that's why we see the conflict there. Let's listen to Ron Paul talk about how much he hates the Patriot Act. The uh, Patriot Act is unpatriotic because it undermines our liberty. We have drifted into a condition that we were warned against because our early founders were very clear. They said, don't be willing to sacrifice liberty for security. Okay, uh, we know where you stood with that. That was pretty much a layup. Why do you think it is, Katie, that CNN seemed to be going so much to John Huntsman and Ron Paul, those look like also ran so far in this contest? I think because John Huntsman has a lot of foreign policy experience. He worked on the Obama, under the Obama administration. Obama has a high approval rating when it comes to foreign policy. And Ron Paul is always controversial. He has some views that are very different from the rest of the Republican field, and they know that he's going to create um, views for them. So I think that people want to hear more about Ron Paul's controversial statements they do? rather than they, th they find it entertaining. More than Mitt Romney, it's it's, it's uh, entertainment Tara? value. Terry, you think more than Mitt Romney you want to hear from Ron Paul? We've been hearing the same thing for six years. <laughs> well, I do think the one thing about Ron Paul is he has a very enthusiastic and energized group of supporters. And so they have also been pushing and complaining about the fact that he has not been receiving enough coverage, considering he's won these straw polls and he's polling very well and continues to poll well. So I think that probably was at play as well. But I agree to your point about uh, John Huntsman. John Huntsman does have a great deal of foreign policy experience, and I actually think he did very well he did last well. night. He did well, but the amount of tension I thought was noteworthy. Well, it's more than that. Uh, Wolf Blitzer his real name. Uh, right. Wolf, Blitzer. Blitz. <laughs> Wolf Blitzer actually did a great job of controlling the crowd. They didn't step on top of one sure. another. They did, and in many ways, it was a better debate because of that, but it was also an entertaining debate. Remember, this is all about entertainment, too. It's about education and entertainment. And that's why you have to have characters like uh, Ron Paul and like 
McCain actually changed the nature of the debate. But not just that, Newt Gingrich changes the nature of the debate. He can't control himself in many ways. He's an intellectual gadfly, and as such, ideas come up, and there's no question about it. He's the smartest guy in the field. That doesn't necessarily make him the best candidate. Right. Governor Perry uh, said, I think we should have a no-fly zone over Syria, <laughs> and I thought Mitt Romney, Katie, was pretty uh, quick on his feet when he said, really? That we yeah. should worry more about their tanks. They're not killing their people right. with their planes. You can't prepare for the tank question. He knows how many. Right. I think he said 5,000. 5, well, and you look at the amount of resources that have to go into a no-fly zone, right? Do we really have those resources to give to Syria, even right. though they're not really using, you know, flying or bombing their people? You know, it is the ground war. Are we really going to send troops into, into Syria to fight that war? I mean, how many civil wars are we going to get involved in? Which is why I think some of Ron Paul's position on that are appealing to people, because he really does have a point when he says we're stretched very thin. And his his policies, Ron Paul's policies, are different from maybe the rest of the field. A lot of the GOP candidates have the totally same, different. Have the same dan stances on lots but of the I, issues. But I just wonder if it's totally different, but the people just tuning in who are not as passionate about it as we are, have a million things going on, I was wonder, is that really how the Republican Party thinks? And maybe that was maybe the attention, right. uh, intention of doing so. Hey, listen, we're going to have the panel stick around. We're going to be talking about